Hey you guys, so today I wanted to show you some new products that I've been really excited about and that I've been enjoying using lately. Just some recent purchases, you know, just kicking around, hurting my bank account. Now it's time to hurt yours. I have a lot of Charlotte Tilbury here for some reason. <laughs> Charlotte, you're doing good lately. Let's give the first shout out to a new brand. Um, so Lululemon, if you guys don't know what that is, it's like an athletic brand. Uh, it was born in Vancouver, just saying. <laughs> Not biased. Lululemon launched a kind like sort of, I don't wanna say makeup, it's like, it's products. They call it their self-care line. So they launched a deodorant a dry shampoo, a moisturizer, and then a lip balm. I've tried it all. The star of the show by far and away, the lip balm. I don't think the lip balm is gonna like replace my bite lip balms necessarily, um, but I do like this one during the day. And the thing that I think is kind of interesting about it is that um, it doesn't look really glossy on the lips. Like it kind of has not a matte appearance, but like just a really natural looking appearance, which is kind of neat. I think it's meant to be like a more universal balm for boys that don't want their lips to look juicy and hydrated. But sometimes I'm hankering for, you know, a, a less glossy lip look. And that's where this comes into play. I've been really liking it. I like the formula a lot. Um, I, I'm interested to see what else they come out with. I imagine they won't really be diving into makeup so much. They'll probably kind of keep it more on the skincare side of things, but I thought it was an interesting addition to the, to the brand. Everything else that I tried from them, I think works fine, but it's not necessarily things that I would um, swap out my current favorites for. Like the dry shampoo and the deodorant are both aerosols and I don't think that I would, I don't like the formula enough that I would swap out my non-aerosol products for it or anything. And then the moisturizer, I just, I, I have a little skin, I have a thing going on, okay? I already have a, a thing going on with my skin. <laughs> So that's my first um, kind of recent purchase that I've really been enjoying. Then, Charlotte Tilbury, baby. So I'm wearing this today. This is the Glowgasm Beauty Light Wand High Blush in Pink Gasm. Whew. <laughs> A lot of gasms going on there. So I've seen Jamie talk about these blushes. There's two. I think there's Pink Gasm and then Peach Gasm. Um, I went for this one, but I'm kind of like, did I want to go pick up the other one? I don't know. I quite like this actually. It's um, it's really shiny. It's not glittery really, but it does have. It's like it's like a blush highlight almost. But it's really, really pretty on. It's really nice and sheer. Um, you can blend it out really easily. It's not like a finicky product by any means. I don't love the packaging. Um, I think you guys already know this because I really loved their contour wand and even their highlight wand is really nice. But there's just, I, I feel like so much product is wasted with this packaging because it all kind of gets all up in that cloud. And it's just not nice. I don't want to connect to the eye cloud, okay? I just want... I don't know, a pump or a doe foot applicator would be nice, I think. Just feel like it's such a waste. But anyways, I do really like that formula otherwise. And I think the appearance of it is really pretty. It's not overly intense. Like I'm not wearing any highlight right now. Um, I'm just wearing that blush and then my contour, but I feel like it still gives a really nice kind of like healthy glow to the skin. That's not anything like crazy and over the top. Okay, another brief. Charlotte Tilbury. Okay, this was fully an impulse buy. I'm not gonna lie to you. <laughs> uh, I saw this on my friend Sammy's Instagram uh, story and I was like, fuck that packaging is sick as hell. And I, I'm a packaging fiend. I don't know what to tell you, okay? I wish I wasn't, but I am. <laughs> so I'm just gonna admit that before we go into this because I didn't love any of the colors but I still bought three of these lipsticks, okay? So Charlotte Tilbury came out with a, a new lipstick line which was called Hot Lips 2. So the first Hot Lips line was like all kind of named after pretty people, like just like supermodels and shit. And then this is the second line which all of these are named after people as well. So the packaging is just really, really gorgeous. So I got this color which is called Dance Floor Princess. So it's just a pretty average pinky nude. It's not like, the end all be all nude of my collection, but I think it's nice. And then this one is uh, JK Magic, and I love this packaging so much. So this one's named after JK Rowling, of course. Fuck man, I just, I'm such a sucker. Like there just comes a time and a place 
where I have to accept that I am the way that I am. And this launch was one of those times. So this one is a little bit peachier. That is the JK Magic one and the Dance Floor Princess one. This one's a little bit peachier. It has a little bit of a darker kind of tone to it. Um, whereas this one's a little bit lighter, a little bit more pink. And then that was the last one that I picked up. This is probably my favorite packaging out of all three. I just think it's so gorgeous. So this one is kind of like the lip balm out of the range. It's marketed as a clear lipstick, which I don't know why they did that because I saw that and I was like, I don't want a clear lipstick. <laughs> and then I was talking to Sammy about it and she was like, yeah, it's like the lip balm. And I was like, I do want a lip balm. I do want that for $40 or whatever this cost me. But anyways, I just think that's some of the most beautiful packaging I've seen in recent years. I really, really am just like so drawn to it. It's so stunning. Um, and the formula is great. Like I don't love all the colors they came out with. Um, I was really partial to Kim KW when they launched the first Hot Lips range. And there wasn't really any color that spoke to me necessarily. I mean, I got three, I recognize that. Let's move on. But the formula is nice. So if there is a color from that range that you're loving and you're loving the packaging like me, I don't think you'd be disappointed in the formula either. Ooh, it's always bittersweet when a holy grail gets discontinued. So you guys have probably seen me use this brush a million and one times. Um, I, for underneath my eye, use this Hakuhodo B5521 brush. The letters are scrubbed off. Um, I love this brush so much. It's like super, super soft. I use it underneath my eyes all the time, but I was having an issue where I would apply my same powder. I always use my Hourglass Veil powder and it was looking like really heavily applied. So my feelings were hurt and I had tried using other powders and stuff like that. Cause I was like, maybe this powder just isn't working on me anymore. And they were all kind of doing the same thing. And you guys have seen how I've applied my powder under my eyes. Like I dip so lightly into the product and I tap basically everything off the brush. Like I'm not going in with a ton of product and like baking or anything like that. So anyways, I just felt like I was constantly like over applying with this brush. Um, and it was resulting in kind of like a weird application of my under eye powder. Smith Cosmetics, sweet, sweet angels. They recently launched their complexion collection um, and one of the brushes in there is the uh, Smith 131 brush. So it's just kind of a smaller um, little brush. This for powder, first chef's kiss of the video. I don't know what it is about this brush. It just applies the most perfect amount of product ever. Like it doesn't, it doesn't ever get like patchy or blotchy or weird like it was kind of getting with that Hakuhodo brush and it doesn't seem to matter what powder I use it's just working out it's just it's just working out well so I really really love this brush I love all their brushes obviously you guys know I'm a huge fan of Smith um, but this was like the standout from the range for me and it replaced my Hakuhodo brush which is not easy to do okay one more Charlotte Tilbury product I swear to god I am so like up her ass right now. I don't even know what to say. I have an addiction. Okay. I have an addiction to cream products. Sue me. So I was sent by a friend of mine, um, Christine, the eyes to mesmerize Charlotte Tilbury cream thang. And this is in the color Betty. Bet. Betty? I believe you guys told me it was Betty last time that I had this issue, this conundrum. And I have never looked back and I've been purchasing basically every color from this range. <laughs> so most recently I picked up the um, rose gold shade. I'm wearing it on my eyes today, kind of paired with a Kaja shadow. Um, but I just, I love, I love this formula. I think it's fantastic. You can apply it as like a really super sheer wash of color all over the lid kind of thing. Um, you can build it up so it's like a more intense kind of uh, sheen of like chrome color basically. It's just, it's a stunning product. It blends out beautifully. It doesn't get patchy. It doesn't crease. Like it's just, it's so fantastic. I've been just obsessed with those little cream pots and I want them all over my body, frankly. Ooh, I haven't used an eyebrow pencil in a very long time, but Hourglass recently, um, we were on a, a conference call. Some of you guys may know um, I'm in partnership with Hourglass. We've been doing kind of like a longer form campaign over the past few months. Um, this video is not sponsored, 
but I do have one coming for you where we kind of talk about the whole brow collection. But this was kind of the star of the show for me because I really haven't, I've stepped away from pencils basically completely because I just gravitate way more towards um, like the brow gels of the world, you know? And then I would be using a powder and stuff. But recently, I just have like issues that come up out of nowhere and it's really hurtful. So anyways, I was having issues kind of like building out my brow on like that outer corner and I felt like powder like wasn't sticking to certain areas. I'm not sure if it's because like maybe I changed my foundation that day or what, but I just felt like I couldn't get that product to look quite right. And so Hourglass actually sent this one out to me and this is the Brow Micro Sculpting Pencil and it's like tiny. It's little, little. It's similar in size to the Anastasia Brow Wiz, but the thing that I like about this um, in comparison, I don't know if you'll even be able to see because it's so small, but um, it, I don't even know how to put my hand around this pencil. <laughs> it's shaped like more of an oval kind of thing. I don't think you guys will be able to see this at all. But anyways, it's the kind of, product is shaped more like an oval so it's really really super thin and you can kind of get really nice hair like strokes with this you're not applying a ton of product which has been my issue with pencils in the past is like I don't like just being like <laughs> and then having this fucking like crazy amount of excess product on your face so I really love the shape of that I don't even want to say applicator but I guess it is the applicator I love the shape of it I think it's like just so smart um, and it works really, really well. And I, I like the color too. So I'm using the color blonde. It's not overly warm by any means. It's kind of just chilling. I like that that formula has a little bit of translucency to it as well because it doesn't, it doesn't get too intense too quickly where you're kind of having to work backwards. You can sort of slowly build up that product. And then on the other end, it just has that super small little spoolie, which I think is great too because I like a tiny little spoolie. Works well. So I've been really digging that product lately. I will have a video that's like longer form talking about it and other things. Okay, this is a product that I got thinking I was going to find love and I left feeling actually quite disappointed, but I just feel like if we're going to be positive and talk about things I'm excited about and enjoying, then also why not take a big runny dump over another product, you know? <laughs> it just seems fair and balanced. So a lot of you may know that I have really loved the Milk Kush mascara. It's it's beautiful. Like it's one of those mascaras that I put on and I was like, shit, <laughs> like this is so fucking nice. Like it separates your lashes so beautifully. It's not super chunky or anything like that. Like it's just, it's one of my favorite formulas and it gives me like one of my favorite appearances that a mascara gives me but I, I have struggled with the formula in that it does kind of transfer a little bit for me, which I didn't have that issue with that product in the beginning, but towards kind of like the end of the tube. And then when I got a new tube, I it started transferring. I don't know why. Anyways, then they launched their waterproof version of the Milk Kush Mascara. And I was like, perfect. Uh, my problems are solved. My debt is cleared. My acne is um, gone and everything's gravy. No, everything is not gravy, everything is mayo, okay? And um, I quit <laughs> my job. This mascara just fell so flat for me, like I, I hate it. <laughs> That's probably a stretch. It doesn't, it just, it just doesn't look anything like the original Kush mascara looks like on my lashes. Um, it's a lot chunkier. It doesn't really separate as nicely. It kind of um, makes your lashes just, I can't even describe it. It's just not good. I just don't like it. And I don't feel like it's particularly waterproof either because I still feel like I'm getting like transfer and stuff like that whenever I wear it. So I'm sad and hurt and how dare you, quite frankly, but Sometimes, you know, sometimes you gotta mention the bad with the good, and that was bad. It was. So anyways, you guys, those are my recent products that I've been excited about, and my one major fail, disappointment, sadness as well. Just to bring it full circle, you know? I'd love to know if you guys have been picking up some new products that you've been excited about lately. If you have some recommendations for me, send it my way. I want it. I wanna go shopping more and buy all of the things and I, I'm looking for some hidden gems, you know? Things that like are almost guaranteed to get discontinued shortly after I fall in love with them. That's kind of my kink, yeah. All right, you guys, I will see you next time. Peace out.